For the last 23 years, the Porsche Boxster has been the quintessential entry-level sports car in which all other entry-level sports cars are measured against. Now, over the years, Porsche has made continuous improvements to the Boxster and hardtop Cayman to the point where some purists have questioned whether these mid-engine sports cars are actually better versus the 911 Big Brother. Now, about four years ago, Porsche redesigned the Cayman and Boxster, moving them to the 718 name and replacing the howling flat six with a guttural 2-liter or 2.5-liter turbocharged flat 4. Now, unfortunately for Porsche, a lot of enthusiasts were very unhappy about this change. So for 2021, Porsche is ditching the flat 4 and going back to the flat 6, as we see here in this 2021 718 Boxster GTS 4-liter. This new Boxster GTS 4-liter is designed to slot below the Boxster Spider and above the Boxster S. And the big question I want answered, if you guys are looking for drop-top motoring perfection, is this 2021 Boxster GTS 4 liter that vehicle? That's what we're here to find out. Hey guys, before we get started on the review, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Keeps. Now, did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent the hair loss is to do something about it while you still have the hair left. This is where Keeps comes in because it's one of only two FDA approved drugs out there that actually prevents the hair loss. You may have tried them before, but never at this price. Now the best thing about Keeps is you can get the treatment delivered right to your home. You used to have to go to the doctor for those awkward doctor visits. Not anymore, Keeps will actually send you a three month supply directly to your home so you never have to visit that awkward doctor's office again. Now I've been using this stuff since March of 2020 and I'm really happy with the results. The receding hairline that I was ex uh, experiencing and the, re the thinning of the crown that you guys pointed out in the comments below. Well, my hair has basically come back after about six months and I'm really happy with my individual results. Now prevention is the key and Keeps treatments can take about four to six months before you start seeing the results. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. So if you're ready to take action and prevent even more hair loss, be sure to go to keeps.com forward slash Redline, where you'll save 50% off of your first order. That's K E E P S dot com forward slash Redline. But with all that said, let's get back to the video. So, those of you who have followed the channel very closely will know that I actually used to own a 718 Cayman GTS for about two years. I just sold it in June of 2020, so about six months ago. And I have to say, seeing this car, a GTS Boxster, basically the drop top twin to my car brings back memories for me. I've always loved the way this 718 generation looks. So obviously, as you can see, Porsche has not made any changes to the design of the Boxster for 2021 or the Cayman uh, as well. Now, looking at the front fascia of this one, uh, Porsche did spec this out a little bit differently versus the one I had. First of all, it's painted in Carmine Red, which is a $2,600 extra. Uh, this one also has the uh, Porsche Bi-Xenon headlights with the four-point LED daytime running lights. This one here also is a German spec model, which means we have body colored headlight washers, which I don't believe we get here in the US spec model. The GTS trim also includes the sport design front fascia. It also gets a 20 millimeter drop in the suspension. So it's a little bit lower, about 0.78 inches lower versus a standard Boxster. And overall in this red exterior color, this is one attractive looking car. I may even say it looks better versus some of the 911 counterparts. Now, of course, I still prefer the Cayman for its silhouette, although the Boxster looks really good when the top is actually down, which I'll talk about the top in just a moment. Now, one of the beauties about this vehicle is the fact that the Boxster and Cayman are ridiculously practical. Now, in addition to the rear cargo area, you also get a front trunk, which Porsche says measures around 5.3 cubic feet. Now, this trunk is much larger versus what you find in the mid-engine Corvette. It's also much deeper. You can actually fit like a 24 or 27 inch roller bag in this front trunk and be able to close it, which is very rare. The Boxster and Cayman remain one of the most practical sports cars, mid-engine sports cars that money can buy. Now, as you can see, looking at the side profile, this particular one here is specced out with the 20-inch Carrera Sport wheels. These wheels are like $600 extra, although if you look at an S Boxster or Cayman, they're about $2,700 extra. And my tester here also has the $7,500 carbon ceramic brake options, which you can tell from the yellow painted calipers. These are six piston calipers up front, four pistons in the rear. The brakes are also upgraded considering if you guys go for the GTS trim, they're almost um, 14 inches in diameter in terms of the rotor size. 
These 20 inch wheels also are wrapped in 235 wide front and 265 staggered width tires in the back. Your only indication that this is the four liter is that very subtle GTS four liter badge on the skirt of the door, which you can actually delete if you guys want to completely debadge this car and make it feel a little bit more stealth. Now, as you can see, the area over here, this bar was painted black. You can also paint that silver or body color if you'd like to give this thing a different look. Porsche in general gives you so many ways that you can kind of customize the design and look of this car, which also makes it pretty damn expensive. Now coming to the rear of the Boxster, as you can see, it is a different look versus the hardtop cousin, the Cayman, but I do think this car looks really good when the roof is down. As you can see, the GTS version has its own unique set of taillights. These are the tinted taillights. They're a full LED design. You also have this little spoiler here that pops out at around 75 miles an hour. You can also push a button to make it retract on its own. It's painted black. The badging here, you can see this Boxster GTS badge is black painted. You can also remove the badge if you guys don't want it. And the exhaust system is slightly different versus the 2.5 liter models. They've been positioned a little further outboard to give this car a different look. It's a pretty subtle change. Now, in terms of the rear trunk area, you can see you can open this up just by kind of waving my hand there with the key fob on you. And it actually has a pretty decent sized rear trunk. It measures around 4.3 cubic feet of space. This is more than what you're gonna get in the mid-engine Corvette. And you're probably noticing there's an oil filler here and a coolant filler there. Unfortunately, you can't see this new engine, but even though I can't show it to you, I'll, I can let you guys hear what it sounds like real quick. So enthusiasts can rejoice because Porsche has finally gotten rid of the flat four, replaced it with a flat six again. So that snarl is definitely very Porsche-like. I'm so happy that Porsche decided to go back to a flat six. Now, again, I can't show you what the engine looks like, but you should know that it's now a four liter flat six, a naturally aspirated flat six. It's essentially a derivative of the three liter turbocharged unit that you find in a 911. Of course, it's been bored out to four liters. It makes 394 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque. Those numbers are about 20 less, which is what you get in the Cayman GT4 and the Boxster Spider but you also get about 29 more horsepower versus my old car, a 718 GTS, which had the 2.5 liter flat four cylinder turbocharged engine, which made about 365 horsepower. A six speed manual transmission is your only transmission option for now, although a PDK is available now to order, although Porsche doesn't have any fuel economy estimates for the six speed manual or the, the PDK. Zero to 60 performance is around 4.3 seconds, and Porsche says you'll reach a top speed of around 182 miles an hour. Now, of course, a bigger engine in the back means that this new GTS 4 liter is slightly heavier. Porsche says it weighs around 130 pounds more versus the 2.5 liter models. As this one sits, it still weighs right around 3,100 pounds. <laughs> Do you need some help? Hard. <laughs> Oh, there we go. When you're in it, it's actually oh, kind of comfortable. It's fine. <laughs> you're removing yourself. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so one of the reasons why you may want to go for a box door over a Cayman is the fact that it's a drop top. It's got a power retractable soft top in there. And to open it and close it, basically, let me show you guys what that looks like. There's a little button in here, a little switch. And all you have to do is just kind of pull this little switch. The top goes up and down in roughly 12 seconds. It's pretty quick. It's also a really high quality soft top. I don't love the way the car looks when the top is up. As you can see, uh, this one here has a black top. You can also spec it out with a red top, a brown top, or a blue top if you'd like. To put the top down, just push the other button here and it goes down pretty quick in about 12 seconds as well. The car just looks so much better with the roof down versus when the roof is up. Now, when it's done, the windows will basically go all the way up or you can put the windows back down. Now, the one thing I do wanna mention, my tester here has the $6,000 full racing bucket seats. And getting out of these seats is a little bit of a challenge because the side doesn't actually bend as much. And once you're actually in the seats, they're comfortable, but gosh, getting out of the seats is kind of a pain. So moving on to the interior of this 2021 Boxster GTS, you guys are probably pretty familiar with this cabin for this generation of 718 because I used to own my Cayman. However, this particular one here being a German spec model does have some key differences, especially when you look at the option structures. Now, as you can see, looking at the interior at a glance, uh, this one has the upgraded GTS interior package, which gives you the full leather stitching on the dash. You have the 
uh, red contrasting stitching on the dash. You have the full Alcantara wheel. This also has the uh, multifunction heated steering wheel and the red uh, tachometer, which I think looks pretty good. Uh, I actually think it adds some, you know, flair to the dashboard, which mine just had an all black instrument cluster. These are also the upgraded $5,900 full racing bucket seats. Now, these seats are electrically height adjustable and they're manual fore and off. So they move back and forward fore and off manually. They do not recline, however, and this one being a German spec model does include heated seats, which in America, you can't get heated seats with these buckets. So I found that these buckets look cool. When you're sitting in them, they're pretty comfortable for me. They're really constricting, but getting in and out of this car, because this doesn't really flex, is basically a challenge. So I would probably skip the racing buckets unless you guys plan to take us to the track all the time and just go with the 18-way seats. Now you can see the door panel also has the contrasting stitching, the real carbon fiber, that's extra of course, and the suede Alcantara. My tester also has the Bose, the Bose premium sound system, which is a 10-speaker, 505-watt audio system. There's also the Burmester sound system, which doubles the amperage or the wattage and adds two more speakers. When I shut the door, it has the same really solid sounding thunk as my Cayman, which is great because this is the soft top, obviously, the Boxster, which I expected the doors to sound a little bit different. Now, uh, this one does have the Porsche entry and drive, but um, for some reason, I still have to stick the key fob, which, by the way, this is the current Porsche key fob. I believe they actually have a newer key in some of their other models. Um, you have to stick it into the little ignition switch here. Maybe it's because it's the manual transmission model, or again, this is a German spec version. Uh, now, because it has the six-speed manual, you've got to put the clutch in and then twist this to the right to turn the engine on. Whew. And right away, you can hear the difference in noise versus the 2.5 or the flat four, the two-liter flat four. This four-liter... <laughs> uh, I love it when Porsche decided to switch out the motor for something a lot, you know, more orally pleasurable for enthusiasts to listen to. Uh, and with the six-speed manual, this is essentially the car that enthusiasts were begging Porsche to do. I'm really happy to see the company doing that. If you don't want the stick, Porsche now offers this with a seven-speed PDK. As you can see, the GTS model comes with the Sport Chrono package, so you can adjust the drive modes here. There is no sport response button that only comes with the um, automatic transmission, of course, but when you have it in Sport Plus, <laughs> now keep in mind also this uh, German spec model has the Euro emissions on it. So it's got a particulate filter on it that's kind of muffling the sound a little bit. In America, this car will be even louder because we don't have that restriction. So thank goodness we're finally getting something that the Europeans are not getting and that's a louder exhaust. Now. Uh, looking at the infotainment system here, you can see this is the Porsche 7 inch uh, Connect, Porsche Connect head unit. It does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That's now standard. Uh, back two years ago, you had to pay extra just for the CarPlay. This is the iOS 14. The screen is definitely looking a little bit small, especially when you look at a new 911 with its big wall of screens or, or, or a Taycan. Um, this is going to basically remind you that Porsche is readying a new generation of 718 in 2022. The steering wheel, as you can see, is just a manual tilt and telescoping. You have to go for the 18-way uh, seats to get the power tilt and tels telescoping with a memory function. This is all just kind of manual adjustments. Uh, I do like the steering wheel. This is the um, GT steering wheel, so it's got a little bit smaller diameter. It's got a really nice fat bolstering. Uh, I don't like the Alcantara, though. I would skip that and just keep the regular leather because this is going to look pretty ugly in a few years from the oils in your hands. I like the carbon fiber trim. Your headlight controls are over here. You can see your audio controls and your controls to control that screen over there are also right here. The speed limit camera on this one does not work because again this is a German spec model so it's not able to read the US uh, street signs along with the GPS the factory GPS in this car doesn't work because it doesn't understand that we're in America we're not in Germany uh, so that's just something to keep in mind most of the times you know you you're gonna use the standard audio system it's nothing super special when you put the car into reverse uh, it gives you just a standard backup camera with parking sensors, uh, front and rear, no top down 360. My tester does have the lane change assist, which is extra for like $740. So that's basically giving you blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, uh, which is great. Um, this screen here, again, you guys have seen it before. Lots of traditional hard buttons. It's got a very nice tactile feel. You've got dual zone climate control, uh, which is nice. More buttons over here to control the sport exhaust. Your uh, suspension, you can raise and lower the spoiler. And then this here opens and closes this is the top. Let's go ahead and put the top down. Just pull on, on this switch. And it goes down pretty quick. You can see it's a power retractable soft top, which is nice. Probably takes about 12 seconds. 
uh, which is great. And it lets in, again, all the sun or I guess the clouds to come in on this cloudy fall day, which is great. Uh, I'd probably go for the Boxster if I was gonna do it again, because I like the open top feeling. Obviously, if you prefer the look of the Cayman, go for that particular one. Um, the center console here, you can see there is a little bit of storage here, but although it's a very shallow, uh, center console storage area. It's got a USB port in there. It's got a smartphone holder over there, so it's got a little, a little bit of wireless charging. Um, this surprises me because when I open this, this actually gets in the way from the way from the position I have the seat adjusted in. So, kind of keep that in mind when you're going for, you know, this particular racing seat. Your cup holders are still over here. They're still incredibly over-engineered. They don't hold drinks in place very well, but at least they've got some pretty nice cup holders there. And then the glove compartment you can see is damped and it's lined with felt but it's a little bit on the smaller side although it's good that Porsche is giving you a glove compartment here because most competitors don't even give you that feature so overall the interior obviously hasn't changed much there are a couple of key differences on this interior versus the one that I owned um, I personally would go for I'd probably I personally go for the 18-way power seats um, with the chalk and two-tone interior combination, but I probably would go for the GTS interior package. I love the leather stitching and the real carbon fiber that's splashed on the dashboard. All right, so I've been waiting a long time to drive the 718 generation with this new four liter because I had a GTS for two years. I actually liked the 2.5. However, this engine is basically the engine that a lot of Porsche enthusiasts have been crying for. <laughs> okay, so six-speed manual, drop-top convertible, nearly 400 horsepower. Yeah, what could go wrong with something like this? Now, just like the GTS models of pr the previous years, this thing has a really good ride quality, even in Sport Plus with the dampers and firm. It still has a very, very tolerable ride. You could daily drive this car easily, although these seats make it a little bit hard to do so because if you guys are a wider frame, you're not gonna fit in these seats particularly well. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> That's the classic Porsche noise. Remember this four liter flat six is a variation of the motor that's in a non-GT 911, the current generation. So it's basically the three liters uh, flat sixes without the turbos. It's been bored out to four liters. 7,800 RPM redline, which isn't as high as a GT3, obviously. However, you can hear it has automatic rev matching when you put it into its Sport Plus setting. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Listen to that noise. You don't even need a stereo system. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> that is the sound of perfection right there. A flat six that's howling away with amazing manual transmission. This shifter is basically near perfect. Oh, I mean, sure, there's the one criticism that everybody has about this generation 718 or the previous GT4 is that the gearing of the six speed basically allow, makes it so you can't drive this thing on public roads without constantly breaking the law because the gearing is so long. The car is constantly basically, just to hear it shift, I wanna go through the gears and it's always, always going, you're always going way too fast because you want the gearing to be shorter. You wanna be shifting more and the long gearing is basically, I believe, for track or emissions duty. That's the reason why it's like this. <laughs> Porsche says this six-speed manual four-liter will get to 60 in about 4.3 seconds. 0.1 seconds faster than an S model with the 2.5. Porsche's estimates tend to be conservative. I'm going to say it's closer to four seconds. With the PDK, you'll probably be doing the mid threes. Remember, the old 2.5 GTS did it in about 3.6 seconds and people were actually getting around 3.3 seconds when the launch control was used with the PDK. So I believe this car feels, well, obviously compared to my PDK 2.5, it is slower, but the responsiveness of the manual, the directness that you get with the stick shift and just the instantaneous throttle response and the revs, oh, <laughs> wow. 
Wow, what, what an engine. This is like basically the perfection of, or the perfect engine swap in this car. I mean, Porsche listened to everyone crying and moaning about how they got rid of the flat six howl, and it's back with a vengeance. Now, I will say it's not quite as loud as those GT3s or even like the Boxster Spider, but this thing only has 20 less horsepower than the Boxster Spider, and it's about 10 grand less, about 15 grand less than a Cayman GT4. So the GTS 4 liter is definitely the model that you want to go with. And what's crazy to me is this German spec model that I'm driving is actually quieter because it's got some particulate filter for the exhaust for the emission system in, in Europe. In America, it'll be even louder because that thing will be gone because the engine does sound a little bit muffled at times. There are certain instances where I'm noticing the particulate filter is letting the engine breathe a little bit. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, you know, what I could what could you compare this to? You can compare it to the mid-engine Corvette. The Corvette is faster. It definitely gets more attention than this car. But you can't get a manual transmission in the C8 at any price. And just wanting to go for that connectedness, that directness feeling is a constant reminder why Porsche caters to enthusiasts. They still offer a manual transmission. They still decided to build a four liter GTS model now with a stick, a stick shift and it was what launched with it first. If you want the PDK, it, was, it came later. Visibility in here is also really good. Although these seats, I wish they, hided, they adjusted for height. They will in America, but not these particular seats because I feel like I'm sitting a little too low. Even when you're just driving the car normally, a great noise. Good ride quality, even in Sport Plus. You don't really notice the gearing issue when you're just driving it normally. I mean, sure, I want to hear the engine more, but when you, gotta, when you go into just its comfort setting or its normal setting, put it into fifth or sixth gear and just kind of cruise, the car just settles down into this really relaxed hush. You can take this thing on a long trip because it's got all this trunk space. Between the two frunks, you have almost 10 cubic feet of space. I was able to fit some pretty large roller bags like a 24 inch roller bag into the front trunk and then a 21 inch in the back trunk. And even though this doesn't have a back seat, obviously a 911 is slightly more practical. There is still something that's very tempting about the 718. And now that Porsche has put the four liter in this thing, they've made it even better. Now with the manual transmission, it does have launch control, but I'm gonna switch it into Sport Plus setting here. You put it into basically Sport Plus, you turn the stability control to Sport Plus mode, put it into first gear, floor the throttle. <laughs> it was actually fighting for traction a little bit there, which I wasn't expecting. <laughs> but you have to appreciate that noise, that noise, and the fact that it will rev up to like 5,000 RPM, just like the PDK. Ooh. <laughs> wow. This is definitely my idea of top-down motoring perfection. Manual transmission, hair is, or wind is in your hair, the howl of a flat six. Even though it's not the fastest accelerating sports car you can buy today, it is definitely one of the most visceral, and that's what makes this car so appealing. Now as a brand, Porsche will always be known as a company that will cater to enthusiasts. I mean, take a look at the 718 Boxster and Cayman. Four years ago, the company replaced the beloved flat six engines and put in a turbocharged four cylinder. Enthusiasts whined and moaned and Porsche has finally started to listen to them. And this is why we have the GTS four liter. Now, if you guys want the four liter, you could also get it in the Spider and the GT4, but those models start at just under $100,000. The beauty about the GTS four liter is this is designed to be the Goldilocks of the Boxster and Cayman lineup, because if you guys want one of these, they start at just under $60,000. That's about the same price as a mid-engine Corvette. However, this model 
model here with the four liters starts at around $88,900, $2,000 less if you guys go for the Cayman models. Now my tester here has several options on it, typical Porsche, it has roughly about $30,000 in options for a total price of $121,000. $121,000 is very steep, you can get a Porsche 911 for that money, so I personally would ditch a couple options that my tester has, like the carbon ceramic brakes, those $6,000 racing bucket seats, I'd probably go for a free color as opposed to this Carmine Red, which is almost $3,000. I built one personally that was, that was around $110,000, which is a lot of money. Keep in mind, something like the mid-engine Corvette is easily twenty dollars to $30,000 less expensive before you factor in dealer markups. But I would argue that for any price, you cannot get a Corvette with a manual transmission. A current generation vet isn't available with a stick. As you guys saw from the driving portion, that manual transmission, that high revving flat six is just pure driving perfection for me. And really, if you guys want something like this, you need to pick it up while you can because there's an all new generation of 718 coming out in 2022. And with electrification coming out, with self-driving, I don't expect Porsche to offer, continue to offer something like this with a manual transmission and that sweet flat six, which sounds so good. It isn't quite as fast as a Corvette or other sports cars in the segment, but I'd argue that this gives you one of the most visceral experiences. And if you guys want the Porsche experience, I'd argue that this one here might even be better than an i11. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2021 Porsche 718 Boxster GTS 4 liter. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.